section 2.5 zeros of polynomial functions. I've always believed that if you put in the work, the results will come. Michael Jordan. In section 2.5, we're going to be looking at um, finding the zeros. And so let's look at some definitions. Back to the polynomial of degree n, where n is greater than zero, then f has at least one zero in the complex number system. If f of x is a polynomial of degree n, where n is greater than zero, then f of x has precisely n linear factors. So basically, if the degree is three, then you will have three linear factors and three zeros. The rational zero test, if the polynomial f of x equals to this polynomial, has integer coefficients, then every rational zero of f has the form So the rational zeros will be equal to p divided by q, where p is the factors of the constant term, and q are the factors of the leading coefficient. And with this rational zero test, What's going to happen is it's going to help us to have a smaller list of numbers to check for possible zeros. So in the last sections, we looked at finding zeros, and one method we used was synthetic division. But in the previous examples, they always gave us at least one zero. In these examples, we're not going to be given a zero. And so first, let's look at some examples for the rational zero theorem. So the first thing we're going to do is determine all the factors of the constant term. So again, the factors are just the numbers that you can multiply to give you that um, term. And all the factors of the leading coefficient. Then we're going to divide them. And then that's going to create our possible um, list. So let's look at example one. So the first step is to identify the factors of the constant um, term. So my constant term here is actually negative 4. So this is our constant. And the factors for negative 4, we're going to write them as p. The factors are 1 plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 4, because 1 times 4 is 4. And then we have um, plus or minus 2. 2 times 2 is 4. We don't need to write the 2 twice. And then we're going to look at the factors of the leading coefficient. So my leading coefficient here is going to be 2. So we're going to call this um, Q, and the factors are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Now that we have our P and Q, then the theorem says that the rational zeros will be given by P divided by Q. So P is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and Q is plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2. So our possible zeros is the quotient here. So we have 1 divided by 1 is 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 4 divided by 1 is 4. 1 divided by 2 is a half. 2 divided by 2 is 1, which we already have. And 4 divided by 2 is 2, which we already have. So here our answer is the possible zeros. And so we have 1, 2, 4, and a half, both positive and negative. And so what this helps us to do is to only concentrate on those eight possible zeros. Um, then we test them, see if any of those are zeros. And then we can break down the problem, which we'll do in a little bit. 
Let's look at example two, list of possible zeros. So again, um, the factors of P is gonna be the factors of the constant, in this case, plus or minus one. And for Q, it's the factors of the leading coefficient. So in this case, plus or minus one, plus or minus two. So we divide P divided by Q. So P is plus or minus one, Q is plus or minus one and plus or minus two. So our possible zeros are one divided by one is one and one divided by two is a half. Okay, so in this example, we have four possible zeros. Example three. List all the possible zeros of 4x to the fifth plus 12x to the fourth. So here my p is going to be my constant, which is negative three. So the factors are plus or minus one, plus or minus three. And the factors of q are, is my leading coefficient, which is four. So here it's not asking us to find the zeros, it's just asking to find the possible zeros. So we divide P divided by Q. And so my possible zeros will be one divided by one, three divided by one, one divided by two, three divided by two, one divided by four, and three divided by four. So these would be your possible zeros. On your web assigned homework, you're gonna need to put these from I believe they ask you from smallest to greatest. So they'll want you to list these from smallest to greatest. So what is the point of this rational zero test? So the point is um, to find the actual zeros. And so we use that test to reduce the number of possible zeros that we can work with.